Greetings to all the learners. Welcome to CEC lecture. The topic of analysis is the review of the work Gender in International Relations by J. M. Tickner. In this lecture, we shall look at key ideas presented in the work Gender in International Relations Feminist Perspectives on Achieving Global Security by J. Ann Tickner. We shall look at the academic context, evolving debates of this very significant influential book in international relations. We shall try to understand the feminist perspective in international politics as we review this book and we shall also analyze it how this perspective led to huge transformation in IR theory. We shall also analyze main ideas of feminism as an approach in international politics. We are analyzing as we analyze this work Gender in International Relations by J. Ann Tickner. Gender in International Relations Feminist Perspective on Achieving Global Security by J. Ann Tickner. It's very essential to take this book from the framework that it tries to present. Dear learners, J. Ann Tickner, Professor of International Relations at the University of Southern California. Now, as we are analyzing this work, we shall take uh, the help of both textual and contextual analysis. We all know that any academic work, in order to understand it be better, both textual and contextual analysis techniques can be employed. What is a text? Text refers to words which are written. While context, context implies the surroundings of the text. The textual reading focuses then on understanding the text itself. The contextual reading in contrast to it stands on the aspect of interpreting and coding textual material, understanding the environment, time framework amongst others. Now we all know that feminism exists in various other academic disciplines also. It is there in English literature, it is there in political theory, it is there in sociology. The main concern of feminism as a discipline, as a study agenda has been to get the diff highlight towards how Biological differences are translated in the form of the social construct of gender. And using this social construct of gender, there is an analysis of domination and marginalization of women. Now, the important aspect highlighted by J. Ann Tickner, Professor of International Relations at the University of Southern California, is that if we do not understand gender, then what will happen. The book says and we quote from the book that not understanding gender perpetuates gender hierarchies. The book begins with a very important question and we quote this question as J. Ann Tickner says and we quote, as a scholar and teacher of international relations, I have frequently asked myself on the following questions. Why are there so few women in my discipline. So what we see here is this very first question acknowledges that there has been absence of women issues focus with reference to the discipline of international relations. Further, the book clearly narrates why it has been written and this is very essential because it clarifies what are the aims and objectives of presenting the book? J. Antigna says, and we quote, The book is an attempt to make the discipline of international relations more relevant to women's life. Second, another important argument presented about the aims and the objectives of the book, that is, it seeks a more inclusive approach to the way we think about international politics. So once again, the book narrates that its aims and objectives are clear. It highlights that somewhere women lives 
are not represented well in international relations and when things are missing in a discipline it definitely lacks an inclusive perspective so in order to rectify this bias this work tries to make an attempt for an inclusive approach further the book says and we quote from the work of j and tickner not until international politics as an arena that values the lived experiences of us all we truly envisage a more comprehensive and egalitarian approach that it is to be hoped could lead to a more peaceful world because gender hierarchies have contributed to perpetuation of global insecurities so what we see here is there is an attempt to understand that if we are to try for a comprehensive picture in ir if we want to adopt a egalitarian approach we have to account that how the experiences that go in making a theory in making a discipline somewhere it has missed out on women's voices and once again here while putting forward the idea of lived experiences jian tickner is critiquing the predominant realist theory in international relations further the book makes it very clear that the audience for the book are just not women the book has been written for all anyone who wants to have a egalitarian and comprehensive outlook towards ir the book and its work are for them then this book also talks about reflectivism as opposed to rationalism as an epistemology now dear learners this is very essential see realism and neo realism as well as neo liberalism they are rational theories they consider state as important rational actor and they are status quoist in their approach where somewhere individual agency doesn't matter now reflectivism as a field of epistemic reflectivism as an epistemology looks into account the individual agency as the book says and we quote from the work of j and tickner women have spoken and written on the margins of international relations because it is to the margins that their experiences have been relegated all those concerned with international affairs men and women alike should also be concerned with the understanding and overcoming their effects so what we see here is that for the first time the individual agency as an important variable was highlighted and this is where reflectivism comes into debate with rationalism as an epistemology in ir now the chapter on endangered securities feminist perspective on international relations this chapter gives us a new way to understand security jan tickner begins by the words and we quote too often the great decisions are originated and given form in bodies made wholly of men or so completely dominated by them whatever of special value women is to offer is shunted aside without expression now this work jan tickner begins by quoting from the remarks of elena roosevelt that how women have been absent from inter- important decision making spheres in ir further even in when they have made contributions somewhere it was relegated to not so important spaces with the focus on high politics of war and real politic as jan tickner says and we quote the traditional western academic discipline of international relations privileges issues that grow out of men's experiences further the work says that we are socialized into believing that when we look at the realist literature when we look at the work of realist thinkers that how they have socialized the discipline into believing that war 
and power politics are spheres of activity with which men have a special affinity and their voices in describing and prescribing for this world are therefore likely to be more authentic. Here you know how realism focuses on human nature. Looking at the work of Thucydides, Machiavelli, Thomas Hobbes, Morgenthau, Tickner, you know, analyzes that how the understanding of human nature with the focus on valor, bravery, all of it has been perceived in a manner that they are features which are more authentic to the male as compared to the female. Further, why this work, Gender and International Relations, becomes very important because it points towards new definition of the discipline. It points out that how women experiences were to be included. It really presents a radical redefinition of the field and imagination of that, that how the discipline would look like if we have a radical redefinition of the field. So once again, why this work is significant? Because it makes us understand how women experiences are important, namely how human agency is important. And then it somewhere gives us a radical reorientation to IR, a radical redefinition of the field. Then alongside elaborating on the possibilities of understanding IR from a new perspective, it tries to present that let's analyze what if, if gender was included as a category of analysis that is discipline of international relations how the discipline might look it makes us ponder it makes us deliberate at how the discipline of international relations might look if gender was included as a category of analysis why this becomes significant once again we have to take into account that the focus of high third to existing ir theory was on power and national interest. In order to understand power and national interest, the three prominent S that guided realism, that is statism, survival, self-help. Now in all of it, somewhere the idea that women, the women concerns matter? Does the idea of women issues figure out in statism, survival, self-help? It was largely missing. But this work, really makes us think that how we can have a new orientation of an inclusive IR with the focus towards gender and women concerns. As the work says, and we quote once again from the review words of J.M. Tickner, to ignore these hierarchical constructions and their relevance to power is therefore to risk perpetuating these relationship of domination and subordination. So what we see here is that the book cautions that if we ignore gender as a concern, what will be the outcome? Outcome will be that we will be having a discipline with concepts which are somewhere biased towards the male. Further, we will be having a discipline or theory which leads to domination, which furthers subordination. Then this book highlights the challenges to realism in the post-Cold War era. It is very essential that realism, especially the work of Hans Morgenthau, Politics Amongst Nations, comes up in the year 1948. Now this text, 1948, is the year for this text is very important because 1948 was the time when Second World War had just ended. Cold War was beginning and somewhere the idea that peace, cooperation, international organizations can could have prevented war, it was somewhere being shattered. Seen in that time, Hans Morgenthau gives an understanding of politics which was based on power, domination through the state. However, in post-Cold War era, it's very essential to understand dear learners, post-Cold War era led to new context in IR. There was rise of new forms of interdependence, rise of globalization. And herein, J.N. Tickner really understands well the challenges to realism emerging from the context of post-Cold War era, where somewhere you 
we can one could not afford to have a ir ignoring norms ignoring human agencies ignoring features of non military security ignoring issues of non traditional security threats as the work says and we quote introduction of competing theories and approach approaches and the injection of these new issues and actors into the subject matter of international relations were accompanied by a shift to a more normative approach to the field now this is very essential normative why because idea that you know morgenthau was often critiqued as a moral and immoral because of the focus on autonomy of the political sphere the focus on separation of ethics and politics so somewhere the issue that norms do matter so this work indeed then become work of jean tickner then becomes indeed very significant in this remark this work further is very essential because it defines what a feminist perspective is it's the work says and we quote feminist theories are constructed out of the experiences of women in their many and varied circumstances experiences that have generally been rendered invisible by most intellectual discipline so what we see here is that there is a very clear assertion that other disciplines too have ignored feminism so what is essential here is that maybe it could be time maybe it could be some other aspects but yes one must acknowledge that experiences of women have been rendered invisible further this work points out that there are div- there is diversity within the feminist perspective the liberal feminist the socialist feminist the standpoint feminist the different feminists amongst others so factors in diversity within feminist perspective now how to situate feminist perspective in international relations theory once again this work gives us some very important highlights that we must understand the work says and we quote values and assumptions that drive our contemporary international system are intrinsically related to the concept of masculinity that is somewhere when we are thinking about state think about it are we thinking from the only point of view of domination when we are thinking about power are we thinking only from a masculine perspective of control when we are thinking about national interest are we thinking only in the concept of us versus them second as the book says and we quote all knowledge is partial and is a function of knowers lived experience in the world third the book makes a very important uh, highlight and we quote theoretical perspectives that depend on a broader range of human experience are important now where feminism this is where feminism becomes very significant in ir because the focus of earlier theories was on the rational side whereas for the whereas now an attempt was being made that the individual experiences do matter human experiences are different it's different from one human to the other so similarly human experiences and the significance of it how important they are in theoretical perspective has been aptly demonstrated in this work by jean tickner further this work really presents an important insight for policy making too now as we read through the book and i we quote from there new threats to security demand new solution quite at odds with the power politics prescriptions of traditional international relations theory the traditional focus what had it has been control military perspective but looking at the new threats like issues of livelihood climate change pandemics technology gender equality sustainability all of it it demands solutions and these solutions cannot come from the traditional perspective which focuses only on the military aspects further this work makes a very important aspect that is how there's a need to incorporate non western perspective in ir the work says and we quote this very significant line 
world's population now this was again written long back the time when the work was written but again becomes all the more relevant in contemporary times that is world's population will live in the south we in the west can no longer afford to privilege a tradition of scholarship so here and there is a very clear argument made that ir cannot just be understood from the western perspective lens because when majority of world population will be living from the global south will be there one has to factor in the traditional perspective the indigenous narratives to have a much more comprehensive and inclusive approach towards international relations there are chapters on a uh, topics of national security that you all must read on political economy and the natural environment now in all these chapters one gets the sense that how there has been redefinition of the concept of security remember survival has been one of the important pillars of framework for realism and survival is as integral to security but when we go through tickner's work gender and international relations this work aptly highlights that how redefinition of the meaning of security has been made possible because of these topics the book points towards new horizons of international relations it ex- presents to us a framework where we can think of security in multi dimensional terms as the work says and we quote from j and tickner's work thinking of security in multi dimensional terms allows us to get away from prioritizing military issues issues that have been central to the agenda of in traditional international relations so what we see here is that when we are rethinking security feminist as a policy framework as a field of uh, as a perspective definitely this re thinking on security has similarities then with the feminist concerns too the chapter on gender perspective on global security talks about that how feminist perspective must introduce the issue of domestic violence and analyze how boundaries between as we quote from the work public and the private domestic and the international political and economic how these boundaries are permeable and interrelated so once again a new definition of understanding security in ir a new approach to global security where we have to question the boundaries of public versus private domestic versus international political and economic and how all of it is essential in ir this book aptly demonstrates further on natural environment too because today ecology as we all know is an important issue of non traditional security threat climate change uh, loss of biodiversity ozone layer depletion all of it is having an important bearing for the nation state at various national and international forums so natural environment too this work by j and tickner way back in its time pointed out that feminist perspective and once again we quote from the work feminist perspective on ecology that i will argue is more inclusive and egalitarian and that therefore offers more promise for the achievement of ecological security so here we have that this work j by j and tickner gender in international relations feminist perspective on achieving global security presents to the learner uh, a very significant insight to understand ir it presents to the learner that how from natural environment ecological security to global security we have to understand ir from a new lens where security cannot be just understood in the masculine sense of control and domination feminism as a approach exists in other disciplines too and therein it points out concerns of marginalization exploitation 
and subordination of women. In international relations too, feminism talks about subordination of women and this work by J. Ann Tickner, Gender in International Relations, talks about that how national security, political economy, natural uh, environment, uh, how all of it demands to be seen from a new lens. Because today, one uh, this work is not only about factoring in women's concern, but it's also about looking at how there are new threats in international relations theory and how theoretical perspectives must include wider range of human experiences. This work presents to us that how values and assumptions somewhere cannot be biased for any discipline. So it is essential that theories must be constructed in terms of due acknowledgement of women's experiences, of women's issues because as right at the beginning of the book, it is pointed out, once again quoting from J. Ann Tickner, to ignore these hierarchical constructions and their relevance to power is therefore to risk perpetuating these relationships of domination and subordination. Dear learners, you must reread through the work of J. Ann Tickner, Gender in International Relations, Feminist Perspectives on Achieving Global Security. This is very essential for preparing your answers, for preparing your research papers, writing book reviews, for amongst others. One must look at the both the textual and the contextual aspect of the work by J. Ann Tickner, Gender in International Relations, Feminist Perspectives on Achieving Global Security. We hope the lecture presented to you significant inputs and insights. Dear learners, we look forward to positive, encouraging feedback from you all. Thank you very much.